hello, welcome, and it's a pleasant day and happy learning to each and everyone. To formally start, I'd like to first introduce myself. I am Ernest Angelica T. Sebastian, a first year student from BS Ed major in English. And I am one of the reporters from Group 4. As a short overview, from the previous lesson 1 in Chapter 4, my group mates have discussed the accounts on the origin of language, wherein they present some theories and hypotheses on how the language started. There are different anthropological perspectives mentioned in the discussion, but what's crucial was that language embodied all aspects in life. But did you know that language cannot just be only in the form of words, but language is symbolic? Language can be a thought of as a system of communication that uses symbols to convey deep meaning. This time, we are now heading to the lesson 2 and still part of the chapter 4, and we are going to learn about semiotics and sign language. So the lesson 2 in chapter 4 is about semiotics and sign language. But before we start the discussion, let me share to you first what we will be expecting in this lesson. So the learning outcomes. While undergoing the learning experiences, the students are expected to, or we as the students are expected to, define semiotics, determine the practice of semiotics and history, and recognize semiotics and its significance. Moving on, I'd like to start my presentation by asking, how do you feel today? Every day, we encounter different experiences that affect our emotions and mood and I know that each of us are dealing with in different situations and probably some of us are having time with our families our friends doing school works or spending time outside or at work and perhaps you may be feeling sad happy and love or angry let's try to look at this picture below and I know that we are all familiar with these symbols. These are called emojis, and this represents our emotions. Emojis express meaning by itself, and the way we conceptualize the emoji, we can determine already our emotions. Other than that, let's move on to the next slide. And let's decode the icons. Surely, you are also familiar with these icons, and now let's try to decode this. Let's start with number one. The very familiar icon we knew. And it is Facebook. Next, number two. What do you think is this icon? It is called Messages. Number three. Hmm, I know um, it is mostly seen in public places and pertaining to the welfare of our environment, it means recycle. And lastly, the most familiar icon, which we love the most, is the camera. So amazingly, we have just constantly interpret this meaning of this the meaning of the signs unconsciously and did you know that what does this study is called it is semiotics so in a broader sense semiotics is derived from the greek word semioticus which means an observant of signs and semiotics is the study of signs, signs and symbols. It is how signs and symbols are used to communicate and develop interpretations. Semiotics tries to know how the meaning of a text, a behavior, or an object builds itself. And semiotics tries to describe the organization of the meaning. 
So, in a broader definition, semiotics is an investigation into how meaning is created and how the meaning is communicated. Its origin lies in the academic study of how signs and symbols or visuals and, and linguistic create meaning. So, try to look at the at the picture below the meaning of semiotics. And let's differentiate signs and symbols as it was mentioned in the previous slide. So, signs is a symbol which understood to refer to something other than itself. While symbols is an object that represents and stands for or suggests an idea or visual images. Our actions and thoughts or what we do automatically are often governed by a complex set of cultural messages and conventions and dependent upon our ability to interpret them instinctively and instantly. So, for instance, when we see the different colors of a traffic light, we automatically know how to react to them, right? And we know this without even thinking about it. And But this is a sign which has been established by a cultural convention over a long period of time. And which we learn as a children and requires a deal of unconscious cultural knowledge to understand its meaning. Viewing and interpreting this sign enables us to navigate the landscape of our streets and society, right? And we are um we relate we can relate to this whenever we see some signs outside um in our society. So moving on, did you know that a semiotician is a person who studies or practices semiotics? And we, as semioticians, deal with symbols. And this may be a, in a form of image, patterns, and motions, and convey meaning. So, truthfully, everyone is a semiotician. I myself, I can be considered a semiotician. Because everyone is constantly and unconsciously interpreting interpreting the meaning of signs around them from traffic lights to color of flags the emojis like what we have did earlier the shape of cars and logo brands so moving on semiotics was founded by a swiss linguist named ferdinand de Saussure, and he refers semiotics as the life of signs within society so, Saucer was a French linguist that was one of the first to produce a semiotic theory during work in the early 90s. And Saucer stated that a sign is made up of two parts, which is the signifier and the signified. A signifier means an emotion, gesture, image, slant, pattern, or event that conveys meaning and communities. And while signified is the concept that a signifier refers to the meaning it conveys. Therefore, for a sign to be considered a sign, it must have a signifier and the signified. So, other than Saucer, there is Locke, John Locke, who is an English philosopher regarded, who regarded semiotics as the key to the evolution of human consciousness and he further espoused that language begun with signs and that our signs and dyadic meaning is a signature and is tied to a specific meaning meanwhile charles sanders pierce stressed that for one to understand signs there must be intelligence capable enough to learn from experience and his concept of semiotics was triadic, sign, meaning, and interpreter. So, 
Moving on, here are the advantages of semiotics. The semiotics takeaways. So, semiotics can help us communicate things through visuals and spoken and spoken. And some signs are accepted and understood globally, like traffic signs, emojis, and brand logos. Semiotics in written and spoken form includes bonds, metaphors, intertextualities, and even cultural commonalities. So, other than um, that takeaways, semiotics help us to get beyond the obvious, which may be obvious after all. It also helps us to understand how cultural and social conventions relate to the communication we create and consume. So, so much for that. At this juncture, we are now going to learn sign language, which is a natural and visual form of language that uses movements and expression to convey meaning between people. So, sign language makes us makes use of the hands, facial expression, and other gestures usually used by deaf or the hearing impaired individuals. However, sign language may also be very helpful for individuals with intellectual and physical disabilities, especially those with communication problems like autism and apraxia of speech. And taking note, sign language can not just be for deaf or the hearing impaired individuals because we we can also use sign language to express and to communicate to others. So, other forms of signs is the finger spelling. And it is um, also a part of another form of signs. So, spelling words in signs may be done using finger spelling strategy. And there is a manual for the English alphabets, which makes up important parts of sign language. Finger spelling is used to emphasize specific words like pine. So P-I-N-E would be spelled referring to pine tree. So the question is, what's the difference of sign language and finger spelling? Sign language uses have hand movements, facial expressions, and body language to communicate, while the finger spelling involves spelling out the letters of the alphabet. So, what is going on around us are full of signs and symbols. And the sign is usually as important for us to know as the sign itself in order to interpret its meaning. And semiotics is a key tool to ensure that intended meanings of, for an instant, a piece of communication or a new product are unambiguously understood by the person on the receiving end. And also, the study of signs and symbols and their use in human communication referring not only to language, but also to cultural and social elements such as clothing and etc. And in other words, semiotics extend the concept of language to include not only words but many systems of communication. To conclude this presentation, we have just learned that semiotics is a way of seeing the world and of understanding how the signs and symbols present in our society, in which we live has a massive impact on all of us unconsciously. So that would be all. I hope you have learned a lot from this lesson. And again, this is Hernes Angelica T. Sebastian, your reporter from Group 4. And for the next lesson, my group mates will continue the lesson 3 in Chapter 4. Thank you and God bless.